uh, what I would like to discuss next is uh, uh, some things that can go wrong with uh, piezoelectric uh, ceramics and also single crystals, uh, which are ferroelectric. Uh, so we really should add here uh, ferroelectric uh, uh, single crystals. Now, these are problems that uh, will not happen with uh, uh, pyroelectric and uh, piezoelectric single crystals, uh, non-ferroelectric uh, piezoelectrics, because they cannot be depoled. Um, so we are, uh, we are discussing the, 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 the problem of uh, depolarization or depoling uh, of uh, of piezoelectric materials. Uh, let's say you have a piezoelectric ceramic and you apply uh, compressive pressure on it. So uh, can pressure reverse a vector of polarization by 180 degrees? Well, uh, it shouldn't, uh, because elastically, uh, this situation and this situation are, uh, sorry, uh, and this situation are exactly the same. They are, they are elastically equivalent. Uh, the elastic energy of this and this is exactly the same. So there is no reason for a field to for a, for a pressure to switch from one uh, to the other. Uh, so ideally, we would say that this is this should not happen. It's not possible. It does happen. Uh, there are several uh, uh, cases in which uh, which have been reported, especially in thin film. So you imagine a thin film, and then you have a part of the crystal which is pulled. Uh, let's say upwards and then for example you apply a tip of uh, of a pfm uh, an afm machine uh, tom force microscope iso force microscope uh, what happens there is that very often what people find out is that the region in the center uh, will will switch while the surrounding uh, region will remain with the same polarity. And uh, I don't have uh, uh, references here, I'm sorry, but you should look uh, a recent paper of uh, Gruverman and colleagues in uh, uh, science and a little bit older papers by Mural, I think it's PRB, uh, but I'm not sure. So you should, you should look for these to see how with mechanical pressure you can switch by 180 degrees, something that uh, uh, normally you would not uh, expect. Now, if you switch the whole crystal, it would remain uh, still pulled just in the opposite direction. If it is partially, that would depole crystal. Uh, what is possible uh, in any case is to switch by 90 degrees if symmetry uh, allows uh, for this. And uh, this happens very often that you depolarize ceramics so uh, that ceramics, if you switch from this uh, to this, would be depolarized in, in this uh, uh, original uh, region uh, uh, direction. Uh, this happens all the time with ceramics that by application of the stress, uh, you will depolarize it. So you have, to be, you have to be very careful about that. Now, what would happen with the single crystals? Uh, in most single crystals, you would expect to see the same uh, same behavior as in ceramics. However, there are some exceptions. For example, let's say we have uh, uh, one of these uh, PMN PT crystals, and we look at the crystal which is uh, pulled along one one uh, zero zero one pseudo cubic direction and polarization is along one 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 pseudo cubic direction so it's a rhomboidral 
okay? So you have uh, polling in a four, uh, this is called uh, so-called uh, four R, uh, four R, sorry, four R uh, uh, structure. Now, if you apply pressure on this, in principle, you should not uh, depole it. Uh, however, what happens in reality is that uh, uh, it is possible to, uh, to depole it. Uh, so first, why we shouldn't depole 12 with respect to pressure, all these domains are same and those that are opposite that would depole it uh, would elastically be the same. Uh, what happens in these crystals, what we found out and you can look for papers of uh, Davis uh, in JP in the middle of 2000, uh, uh, we, we, we found out uh, that it is possible to uh, move domains to induce uh, other uh, structures and so on. So they are, they are not as stable as uh, uh, one would uh, think to be uh, ideally. So uh, working with the piezoelectric uh, uh, ceramics, means ferroelectric materials and uh, most ferroelectric crystals, you have to be extremely careful with application of external pressure, okay? Because they may depole. Uh, what happens with materials that are not uh, ferroelectric, such as quartz? Well, they will not depole in the sense that you orient uh, polarization. There is no polarization except induced polarization by external forces. Uh, but what can happen, for example, in a quartz is that you produce twins. And uh, uh, twins are, uh, 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 the quartz crystal is, uh, I think, uh, ferrobielastic, I think. I'm not quite sure, should check that in a Newnham's book. And as soon as you have that uh, ferroic uh, structure, you can produce twins and they are consequence of the higher or higher temperature uh, symmetry that can, uh, uh, so all directions are not uh, uh, exactly, uh, uh, you can induce twins uh, in, uh, uh, by, by applying a pressure in quartz. Uh, I think people use langasite to, uh, to avoid this. Um, so it's a crystal that has a similar symmetry as a quartz, but doesn't show twin structure because high temperature phases, I believe, are different. You, sh you should check uh, this. Uh, another thing that can go wrong with piezoelectric ceramics and ferroelectric materials in general, but let's focus here on ceramics, is that if you come very close to uh, uh, transition temperature, the Curie temperature, your material may be uh, depoled. And if you don't go exactly to Curie temperature, but still close to it, you give enough thermal energy to domains. And then under the field that you are applying, even measuring field, uh, uh, and even if there is no measuring field, you will randomize uh, the, uh, the, uh, the domain structure. So if you cool, in this direction, uh, then, uh, uh, sorry, if you heat in this direction, then cooling would go, would go like this. Uh, so this is for cooling, your piezoelectric coefficient would be reduced, even if you don't go all the way to TC, uh, just approaching it. And this defines, uh, this defines uh, how far you can use piezoelectric material. Remember, there is a Curie temperature. Above that, it's no longer domains disappear. And if you cool it through back uh, without applying electric field uh, to force domains in a certain direction, uh, and sometimes it's necessary to apply both stress and uh, electric field to polarize it, uh, you will lose uh, polarization of the material. Maybe not completely, but part of it. So. Uh, 
uh, what is a good practice very often is that you take your piezoelectric material, you heat it before using it first time, you heat it to the temperature, uh, the maximal temperature where you, maximum temperature where you would be using it, uh, anneal it there for a while, then cool it, and then you should use, usually get a response uh, which should be uh, stable uh, for many, many cycles. Now, uh, here is an example of KNLN, so potassium, uh, sodium, lithium, niobate, one of these uh, materials that are candidates to replace PZT, at least in some applications. So we start here, that's our uh, first uh, cycle. We come to some temperature, TC here is very high, 400 degrees or so. And then we, then we go back. Uh, and you see that uh, uh, here we are plotting coupling coefficient has dropped significantly. And then in the next cycles, it uh, remains more or less uh, constant. It doesn't depole any longer, uh, at least not much. Uh, now, if TC is at 100, uh, at 400 something degrees, why should it depole so much at 140 degrees? Well, the reason for that is that here there is a phase transition between uh, uh, orthorhombic and uh, tetragonal uh, phases. I think uh, I, I think that's the uh, that's the one, and. Uh, uh, so you, you don't necessarily have to go uh, to Kiri temperature to completely erase uh, poled domain structure, oriented domain structure. It is enough sometimes just to change that domain structure. Okay. And then when you go to the next, uh, to the lower temperature phase, uh, the domain will not be uh, 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 oriented as much as they can. So the limitation for use of piezoelectric materials is not necessarily a TC, the Kiri temperature. It can be any phase transition. But this phase transition may also work in your favor. Uh, how? Well, uh, it depends a little bit on how you pulled your material. If you pulled it in a room temperature phase, then going over the phase transition will uh, uh, will uh, uh, affect the domain structure and it may reduce your effect. If you pull it in such way that you apply electric field uh, in a high temperature phase and then cool it down with a field along, along that high temperature phase direction, then you may induce only one part of domain structure like these oriented engineered uh, domain walls uh, which, we, uh, which we call and uh, uh, and sometimes it is possible that way to induce uh, a particularly stable uh, domain structure which will survive going over this uh, phase transition uh, temperature. So uh, something that I unfortunately uh, forgot to say before, but uh, when you when you pull crystal along non-polar directions in which you get a uh, uh, domain structure which is uh, uh, where you have uh, uh, several domains, uh, uh, all of which are energetically equivalent, uh, that is called uh, engineered domain structure. Uh, and we can give uh, we can give the whole uh, course on just engineer domain structure. Uh, it can be called also if you uh, if you if you manage to do it like this. So that would be one R uh, four R one T two T two O and so on, uh, depending on how many variants of the domains uh, which have uh, equal energy. Uh, with respect to the forces fields that you may be applying uh, to it can be induced in the in the material. Uh, so this is engineered domain structure. So unfortunately, I cannot talk more about that, but it's a very important uh, topic, and I somehow uh, missed to manage it uh, to to mention it before. Uh, you can find uh, uh, several. Uh, papers 
on this and I suggest you read those by uh, Vada. Uh, Vada and uh, Tom Shrout, uh, several of them uh, just by Vada and uh, some uh, together with Vada and Shrout. Uh, I think they start in 1999 and go to 2000 uh, something. Uh, so Vada did a lot of work on a barium titanate, also on uh, 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 PMN, PT, potassium niobate and so on and uh, did some some very interesting work there, but unfortunately we cannot mention all of that. Uh, another thing that happens with uh, ferroelectric materials is so-called uh, aging. Uh, what is aging? It's evolution of the properties with time after polling or any other change of the domain structure. So you take your sample, you keep it at room temperature, you for example polarize it, and then you apply an electric field uh, you remove field, you leave it, and you will see that properties will keep changing with time uh, for a very long time. Or you just take it, you increase its temperature, you cool it down, and you will see that properties change with time. Uh, so here is an example. This is uh, D33 and Epsilon33, so permittivity, longitudinal permittivity, and longitudinal piezoelectric coefficient as a function of time in uh, let titanate uh, thin film where we uh, measured it uh, after applying some uh, field pulse to it. And you see that uh, both drop uh, approximately linearly on uh, uh, log time uh, scale. Uh, so that's, that's uh, uh, called uh, aging and it has to do with uh, either uh, a reorientation, readjustment of uh, domain walls in the material over period of time where uh, under field or temperature or pressure they uh, temporarily reached some uh, 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 quasi equilibrium structure and then when they are brought to zero field state or room temperature they uh, tend to reach a new equilibrium state and this process can take a very very long time. So some materials like soft PZT uh, age quickly so you don't even you don't even observe it. So they look like they are not aging because all aging happens within a very short period of time, while hard materials will age for a very, very long time. Uh, where you have this uh, rearrangement of uh, domain walls and uh, uh, dipole centers. Uh, and uh, finally, uh, in, in uh, yes, uh, uh, also in this section, uh, you remember that we said that in ferroelectric materials we will have this uh, hysteresis and the hysteresis is uh, uh, not good for applications because basically what it uh, gives us is two different uh, states uh, for a given field. So if this is a field you have response R1 and R2 uh, for the same field or uh, you have that for the same response uh, you can achieve with two different forces. Uh, and this ambiguity, this hysteretic behavior is not something that you want in a devices. If you apply, uh, if you drive an actuator and it's not sinusoidal periodic signal, but it's something that, you know, goes uh, like uh, this and then it changes with the time, you would very quickly lose uh, track of where you are uh, with, your, with your material. So how can we handle that? Well, one way is to make material without uh, hysteresis and I will uh, discuss that next. And the other one is to model uh, piezoelectric material uh, with some uh, equivalent mechanical and electrical circuit and then uh, uh, have a control mechanism which measures uh, uh, strain 
or a charge, usually it's strain, it's usually done on, uh, on actuators. I actually don't know of any case where it is done on, on sensors. Uh, it measures strain and uh, uh, then it gives the feedback to the driving circuit to adjust driving field to keep strain uh, linear. Uh, so uh, basically if you have a signal uh, that is like this, you give uh, feedback that is opposite of that and you can get a straight uh, line uh, in your response. You can completely remove this creep and uh, uh, now uh, creep and hysteresis. Now, very often uh, this equivalent circuit actually doesn't uh, describe uh, material very accurately. Uh, physically accurately. And one way to do that is to use uh, uh, this Rayleigh model that I told you. You can add additional terms and this works, uh, uh, this works uh, very nicely uh, to, uh, to, to handle uh, uh, this uh, situation. So uh, one paper uh, which you can uh, check if you're interested in this is uh, by uh, Zhang. Uh, Two thousand twenty and myself and me, uh, in which uh, in which it was illustrated how to use. Uh, I think that paper was in a smart materials. Uh, where you can see how you can uh, how you can um, model uh, this and uh, make a feedback circuit using uh, using a Rayleigh model, which is physically more realistic uh, than these sort of black box uh, models. And finally, as I said several times, you can control uh, properties by material engineering. And as a material scientist, uh, uh, that's what we would like to do. If you add uh, external control, uh, you need additional electronic elements in your system. Uh, this is speed limited. Uh, this costs more. Uh, requires much more complicated driving circuitry. You need the uh, strain sensors and so on. Uh, but if you can make your material uh, unhysteretic, that would be much, much uh, better. So can this be done? Well, in principle, in principle, yes, but not for all materials. Well, uh, for example, you can do it by using uh, hard materials. They will always have less hysteresis than soft materials, and you have already solved half of the problem. However, you lose on, uh, on stroke. Uh, you will get less displacement. Here are some uh, examples. Uh, so we can do this with dopants, defects. This is what was done in hard PZT. We can choose appropriate structures. Uh, there are structures which are not ferroelastic. Uh, which don't have ferroelastic domains. And for piezoelectric effect, as you remember, it's only ferroelastic domains which will contribute to hysteresis. We can do it by uh, microstructural control and there are other ways. And here are examples in uh, 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 bismuth titanate. Uh, this is a high temperature piezoelectric material. It can go up to six, 700 degrees as opposed to PZT actuators, which would go only to maybe two, 300. Uh, and uh, for example, here we have a coarse grain and a fine grain. Uh, we lose a little bit on the piezoelectricity, but uh, this is a hysteresis in a coarse grain and in a fine grain, we have much less uh, hysteresis. And if we change the composition, uh, we can uh, eliminate uh, we can eliminate hysteresis uh, altogether. And this material is uh, fairly linear, uh, which is consistent with not having a hysteresis. So what we are changing here is just uh, uh, amount of, uh, 
of uh, a solid solution. This is a solid solution between uh, bismuth uh, titanate and uh, bismuth uh, titanium niobate, I think. Uh, you, if you're interested, uh, you can uh, look for uh, papers of uh, Chu, uh, me, and I think this is the one with uh, Sagalovic. I think this is uh, uh, this is the name. Uh, this was done in late uh, 90, uh, 1990s. I, 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 I hope I'm spelling correctly the name of my of my colleague. Uh, okay, so there are various ways uh, in this we can this can be done. Uh, an electrical or mechanical engineer would use a feedback circuit uh, to compensate for that. A material scientist would like to uh, change the material and both can be uh, very effective. Uh, so uh, we will stop here with, uh, uh, with these issues that can happen with uh, uh, piezoelectric ceramics and we'll next go with applications, uh, sensors, actuators, and uh, transducers.